DHS 74.
that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow, and against him that lifteth himself up in his brigandine. And spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her host. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her streets. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Flee out of the midst of Babylon, and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her, take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her, and let us go every one into his own country. For her judgment reacheth unto heaven, and is lifted up even to the skies. The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Come, and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. For his device is against Babylon, to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon, make the watch strong, set up the watchmen, prepare the ambushes. For the Lord hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. The Lord of hosts hath sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee. He hath made the earth by his power, he hath established the world by his wisdom, and hath stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Every man is brutish by his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image, for his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are vanity, the work of errors. In the time of their visitation they shall perish. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms, and with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman, and with thee will I break in pieces old and young, and with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock, and with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen, and with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyest all the earth, and I will stretch out mine hand upon thee, and roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. And they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations, but thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. Set ye up a standard in the land, blow the trumpet among the nations, prepare the nations against her, call together against her the kingdoms of Ararat, Mini, and Ashkenaz, appoint a captain against her, cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars. Prepare against her the nations with the kings of the Medes, 
the captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the land of his dominion. And the land shall tremble and sorrow, for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They have remained in their holds. Their might hath failed. They became as women. They have burned her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. One post shall run to meet another, and one messenger to meet another, to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken at one end, and that the passages are stopped, and the reeds they have burned with fire, and the men of war are affrighted. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her yet a little while, and the time of her harvest shall come. Nebuchadrezzar, the king of Babylon, hath devoured me. He hath crushed me. He hath made me an empty vessel. He hath swallowed me up like a dragon. He hath filled his belly with my delicates. He hath cast me out. The violence done to me and to my flesh be upon Babylon, shall the inhabitant of Zion say. And my blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldea shall Jerusalem say. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will plead thy cause and take vengeance for thee, and I will dry up her sea and make her springs dry. And Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons, an astonishment and an hissing without an inhabitant. They shall roar together like lions, they shall yell as lions whelps. In their heat I will make their feasts, and I will make them drunken, that they may rejoice and sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake, saith the Lord. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams with he-goats. How is Shishak taken? And how is the praise of the whole earth surprised? How is Babylon become an astonishment among the nations? The sea is come up upon Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of the waves thereof. Her cities are a desolation, a dry land and a wilderness, a land wherein no man dwelleth, neither doth any son of man pass thereby. And I will punish Bel in Babylon, and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he hath swallowed up, and the nations shall not flow together any more unto him. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. My people, go ye out of the midst of her, and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. And lest your heart faint, and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land, a rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor, and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heaven and the earth and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon, for the spoiler shall come unto her from the north, saith the Lord. As Babylon hath caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. Ye that have escaped the sword, go away, stand not still. Remember the Lord afar off, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. We are confounded because we have heard reproach. Shame hath covered our faces, for strangers are come into the sanctuaries of the Lord's house. Wherefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will do judgment upon her graven images and through all her land the wounded shall groan. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet from me shall spoilers come unto her, saith the Lord. A sound of a cry cometh from Babylon, and great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans, because the Lord hath spoiled Babylon, and destroyed out of her the great voice. When her waves do roar like great waters, a noise of their voice is uttered, because the spoiler is come upon her, even upon Babylon, and her mighty men are taken, every one of their bows is broken, 
for the Lord God of recompenses shall surely requite. And I will make drunk her princes and her wise men, her captains and her rulers and her mighty men. And they shall sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken, and her high gate shall be burned with fire. And the people shall labor in vain, and the folk in the fire, and they shall be weary. The word which Jeremiah the prophet commanded Sariah, the son of Neriah, the son of Maasiah, when he went with Zedekiah the king of Judah into Babylon in the fourth year of his reign. And this Sariah was a quiet prince. So Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come upon Babylon, even all these words that are written against Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Sariah, When thou comest to Babylon, and shalt see, and shalt read all these words, then shalt thou say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off, that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but that it shall be desolate forever. And it shall be when thou hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt bind a stone to it, and cast it into the midst of Euphrates. And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and shall not rise from the evil that I will bring upon her. And they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. When the winds cry with 
tears, emotions, the winds cry, and your vessels broken, your heart sings, you can't take anymore. Fear says you'll never reach the shore. God says you're going to make it. Welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. I thank the Lord because I'm standing before people that love God with all their hearts. I can't imagine anyone that doesn't love God staying in the sun calm cool collected 
consecrated and totally given to the Lord and rejoicing in the presence of the Lord. Congratulations, everyone, in Jesus' name. And I pray the wonders of the cross will work in your life, empower you, encourage you. Will you amen? And lift you up in Jesus' name. I will praise the Lord for all our choirs and ministers and songs, from the children to the youth to the campus and to the adult choir and to the trumpeters in particular. Praise the Lord. The Lord be with you today and make his face to shine over you and turn everything around for the better in your life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for your people. We thank you for their love, their commitment, and their yieldedness unto you. I'm asking, O Lord, today, you bless everyone beyond their expectation in Jesus' name. <clears throat> we pray, O Lord, that today the wonders of the cross will be revealed, will be embraced, and will bless everyone in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. amen. Now a global amen. amen. God bless you. You can sit down. As we remind ourselves. And we celebrate the wonders of the cross. This morning's service. We're looking at Christ on the cross and it wasn't silent there Christ on the cross uttered some words powerful words wonder working words the words that have effect and power and authority from that time until this time until it will come again today I'm looking at and searching and teaching and revealing to you the seven wonder walking saints on the cross. On the cross, there were things they said having an impact, having a power, having authority, having a yoke breaking effect on the life of everyone. Seven of them, seven wonder walking saints of christ on the cross open your bible with me matthew chapter 27 verse 46 at about the ninth hour jesus cried with a loud voice saying eli eli lama sabachthani that is to say my god my god why hast thou forsaken me that's number one. Luke chapter 23 and in verse 34. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his garments and cast lots. That's number two. Verse 43. In verse 43, and Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. That's number three. Verse 46. It says, And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into, their, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost number four john chapter 19 a meeting from verse 27 then said he to the disciple behold thy mother and from that hour that disciple took her unto his own house number five verse 28 in verse 28 after this jesus knowing 
that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture may be fulfilled, says, I thirst. Number six, verse 30, in verse 30, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished, final. All your problems finished. All your calamities finished. And judgment on earth, and judgment in eternity, all accomplished and finished, and you will no more go through that judgment anymore in Jesus' name. Your sickness is all finished. I didn't hear a good amen. Calamity is all finished. All the works of the devil in your life finished, and every yoke and every cause finished in Jesus' name. And he bowed his said, and gave up the ghost. Those are the seven sins, wonder walking sins of Christ. On the cross, we are considering today. And I pray every one of them will bring benefit in your life in Jesus' name. Look at the seven. Number one, the wonders of substitution. That is, he was there for us, suffering for our sake. Number two, the wonder of supplication. Even for scorners, for all those sinners, he makes supplication for them that God shall forgive. Number three, the wonder of salvation for the worst of sinners. The wonder of salvation for the worst of sinners. Number four is the wonder, the wonder of solace, comfort, sympathy, empathy for the sorrowful, for the mother who was sorrowful because his sword, his spear had pierced her heart. Her son was hanging on the cross and then he brought solace and is bringing solace and comfort to you for those who are sorrowful. The next one, the wonder of spiritual eternal satisfaction. I'm going to heaven. Didn't you say for yourself? Where are you going? You have spiritual now satisfaction and then all through all eternity you have satisfaction in jesus name and then the wonder of his satisfactory sacrifice for all seeking souls and then finally it's the wonder of supreme submission for sublime sovereignty let's go at it everything one by one number one is the wonder of substitution suffering for our sake the wonder of substitution suffering for our sake suffering for your sake he came to take your place he came to take your punishment he came to take all the punishment all the pressure all the eternal consequence of what you have done that's why he said in matthew chapter 27 verse 46 about the ninth hour jesus cried with a loud voice saying eli eli lama sabachthani and that is to say my god my god why have you forsaken me the question jesus asked we need an answer for that he said my god the God of heaven, my own father, we have been together from all eternity, from the deathless past, and we're going to be together until the deathless future. Why at this time on the cross have you forsaken me? 
in Psalm 22, reading from verse 1, you will see that it had been prophesied that Christ will come and Christ will bear the load, the shame, the degradation, the punishment of the sins of the whole of humanity. And you find in Psalm 22, verse 1 My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Look at verse 16. In verse 16, it says, For dogs have compassed me, and the assembly of, of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. That's crucifixion. David did not go through that. He was looking ahead to when Christ will come and be your substitute and take all your punishment and take all your shame and take every evil sin that should have come upon you. He became your substitute. And as you come and you say, Lord, I understand it was for me that was done. You bore my sin, you bore my shame, you bore all the consequences of my evil. Evil will not come to you anymore. The consequences of your sin, they are all removed. It became your substitute. Look at Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6, it says, all we like sheep have gone astray and we have turned every man his own way and the lord has laid on him look at that your substitute the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all all at the beginning we've all gone astray and then all at the end all the iniquity that you have done have been laid upon him and then in verse 8 it tells us in verse 8 it says he was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation for he was cut off out of the land of the living look at this for the transgression of my people was seized streaking that the substitution right there and as you come and you kneel before the lord as you come and you appear before the lord and you say it was done for me he carried that for me he bought that for me he took that away for me he cried he suffered and he had the pain he had the punishment and he took all that so that he will relieve you he will relieve me he will relieve everyone from the suffering that should have come the shame that should have come the punishment that should have come he got everything upon him so that You'll not bear that again. And then we're told in First Peter chapter 3, verse 18. It tells us what Christ has done. It tells us how he stood in your place that you might come and stand in his place. First Peter chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ also has once suffered for sins. He had no sin, he suffered for your sin. The just for the unjust. That is the just taking the place of the unjust. The innocent taking the place of the guilty. The righteous standing in the place of the sinful. And the almighty Christ, the one that had no sin and lived a perfect life, he stood in your place. He said, get aside, let me take your sin. Let me take your punishment. Let me take all your injustice, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Look at that. Why hast thou forsaken me? That he, the sinless one, the spotless one, the Savior, and the heavenly high one, that he might bring us to God, 
being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the spirit number one then of the wonders of the cross is the wonder of substitution suffering for your sake number two now in number two we have the wonder of supplication supplication for sinners supplication for scorners supplication for scoffers supplication for the worst of sinners even the people that said let his blood come on us and upon our children all the same yet supplication for them and now for you that whatever you have done maybe you have scorned and you have said what good thing will come <clears throat> out of nazareth and yet for you that scorned him you that rejected him in the past as you come to christ today and you say how sorry i am how repentant i am that i could that i could say what i said that i could do what i did that i could even bring a curse upon myself now i turn around and the wonder of his supplication will work for you work for you today in jesus name amen luke chapter 23 and i'm reading from verse 34 luke chapter 23 reading from verse 34 then said jesus father forgive them them who pharisees sadducees them who caiaphas them who all those israelites them who all those that had rejected him them who them that brought a curse upon themselves them who them that scorned him them who them that made fun of him you say you are the christ come down from the cross he said father forgive them for they know not what they do they parted his garment forgive them they cast lots on him on his garments lord forgive them what have you done in the sight of the lord what have you done <coughs> <coughs> Thank you, Oyo. God bless you. What have they done? And what have you done? He made supplication for you. And he said, Father, forgive them. And you know, the Father will not neglect. The Father will not overlook. The Father will not despise. The Father will not cast away. The Father will not deny the prayer of Jesus for you. Forgive them as you come to the Lord. And you say, Lord, I have sinned. I didn't know what I was doing at that time. I didn't know the eternal consequence of my sin that will come upon me as a result of the evil I was doing. The lies I told, the deception I practiced, the hypocrisy I manifested and the private secret sin I committed and the public common habitual sin I've been committing I didn't know the consequence I didn't know that that would land me in eternal destruction eternal separation from the almighty God how, how could I know? I was ignorant, Lord. I come now and repent before you and I kneel in total submission before you. The Lord will forgive you. Jesus already prayed for you and he said, My Father, I know that your pure eyes are to behold iniquity and every sin will come in record in the sight of the almighty god lord i know that father i know that but father forgive them all of them as they come as they have said my suffering for them my substitution for them as they take 
the volume and they take the evidence and they take the uh, sacrifice that are made for them forgive them today as you come to the lord on the strength of the supplication of christ for you on the cross of calvary the wonder of salvation will come in your life the wonder of regeneration will come in your life the wonder of being made a new creature because you came under the efficacy of the prayer of jesus that prayer that he prayed will be answered on your behalf in jesus name father forgive father forgive when you repeat that and you come to the heavenly father father forgive me because i was ignorant of the consequence of what i was doing i called it a small sin i called it a negligible sin i called it an ordinary word i spoke i called it an ordinary act of a natural human person but now i know that every little sin every big sin every common sin every habitual sin will face the eternal judgment of god and i come and i repeat the prayer of jesus father forgive me forgiveness will come to you ephesians chapter one i'm reading from verse seven ephesians chapter one verse seven is telling us about the redemption that we have in his name in his blood because of the substitution it says in whom we have redemption we have redemption it's not we didn't have it before it didn't say we had we didn't have it before but now that we came under the sympathy and the sacrifice and the supplication of christ and we say lord i come now at that time when you come to the lord you have redemption through his blood the blood is shed on the cross of calvary then he says the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace according to the riches of his love according to the riches of his mercy now you come and you say i'm not depending on my on my good works I'm not depending upon whatever good thing I've done, the bad thing I have done, the evil thing I have done, the sinful things I have done will still earn the judgment of God. And Lord, I come not according to my good works, according to your grace, the riches of your grace, the riches of your love the riches of your mercy and because of that looking at christ on the cross i request forgiveness i demand forgiveness i'm pleading for forgiveness and then he says now in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace and i pray that before you go today you have assurance of his forgiveness confidence in his forgiveness the trust in his forgiveness and all the guilt and all the condemnation in your heart in your life in your memory everything will be wiped away number one is the wonder of substitution suffering for our sake number two is the wonder of supplication even for scorners number three now is the wonder of salvation for the worst of sinners would you know that there's salvation for everyone all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And two of those sinners were crucified 
were Christ Jesus, and many of those sinners were passing in front of the cross of Christ, and many of those sinners, after they had done what they had done, <clears throat> they were still walking about, and they didn't think of their eternal destiny. What they did earlier about recommending Christ for crucifixion. They had done that and they were going to do more evil. And then uh, there was one of the sinners on the cross. He had committed such a crime like the worst of sinners that the nation could not forgive him. The judiciary could not forgive him. The religious leaders of the land could not forgive him and they consigned him to the cross. And now salvation came for him at the last hour, at the last moment, at that place where he was already suffering the consequence of the crime he had committed of the sin he had committed and now look at this in luke chapter 23 reading from verse 39 and one of the benefactors which were hanged railed on him saying if thou be the christ save thyself and us the man was suffering he was very near the end of his sinful life, of a criminal life. He was near the end of passing from earth to the great beyond. And yet, he will not repent that this one. Look at verse 40. In verse 40, but the other answering rebuked him, saying, does that not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? Verse 41, in verse 41, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man, referring to Christ, this man has done nothing amiss nothing wrong he lifted him up as the righteous one as the pure one as the innocent one as the sinless one he acknowledged and he confessed that Christ was righteous Christ was holy and Christ did not have any sin to suffer for he said this man this Christ crucified on the cross he has done nothing amiss look at verse 42 and he said unto Jesus Lord he recognized him Lord there were people that recognized the Lord while he was going about and healing the sick that's simple but now to recognize him as Lord while suffering on the cross while bearing the sin of the whole world to recognize him as Lord while he himself cried out my God my God why hast thou forsaken me to recognize him that he is Lord the Lord of the whole universe when he was on the cross and then it said remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom what does that mean he said Lord Jesus you have a kingdom Lord Jesus you are dying now but you will rise again there's going to be resurrection and I know that even when you die after you have died you will rise up and come into thy kingdom and then the man said Lord remember me I don't want to perish remember me 
I don't want to go to hell. Remember me. I don't want to land in in the kingdom of Satan. Remember me. I don't want to spend eternity in the kingdom of darkness. Remember me. Remember me when you come to your kingdom. And then look at this. Here is salvation for the worst of sinners. In verse 43, verse 43 says, And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today, somebody shout, Today, today. shout it out, Today, today. shall thou be with me, with me, with me, where? In paradise you know there are people who are ignorant of the scriptures and they say when Jesus died that day he didn't go to heaven then they said the second day he didn't go to heaven they said the third day he didn't go to heaven and they said he went you know so what they mentioned how ignorant Jesus said today somebody help me shout today Anywhere you are in the world, understand that that day when Christ died on the cross and he said, Father, into thy hands I commend, I commit my spirit into thy hands hands into the hand of god you know all those uh, people they preach and you know they run about on the pulpit and they said i want to tell you when christ died then satan took hold of him and then he was in hell he was fighting him was satan and then he was saying satan leave me alone and then he struggled because he was fighting for redemption uh -uh. Already on the cross, he said it is finished. It's on the cross, he finished everything concerning him, our redemption. And he didn't struggle with Satan and struggle with those demons. And they say, ah, when Christ got to that hell in those three days, all the demons were rejoicing and they were shouting. They said, oh, we have conquered him. That's all rubbish. It said today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. He went to heaven when he left the cross. And then he also took this man with him. And today he will take you with him. Today he will say, all your sins are gone. All the punishment, everything gone. And then you will say, your name will be written in the book of life today. Because you will be with him in paradise. Today you enter the kingdom of grace. The kingdom of power. And the kingdom of of life and then uh, when it comes to time to go to eternity you'll be in heaven you'll be in paradise in uh, jesus name amen. did i hear a good good amen? amen look at number four here number four is the wonder of solace for the sorrowful whatever sorrow is in your heart today the lord will comfort you the comfort of the Lord will be in your heart, will be in your mind. If you are crying because of sorrow, you have lost a child, you have lost a wife, you have lost a husband, and all the words our brethren are giving you, they are not able to soothe you, they cannot touch that place where you are hurting the Lord is going to grant you comfort today in jesus name he will take the body away he will take the sorrow of bereavement away christ was dying on the cross and the mother was there the mother had been told at the birth of christ that he sought his pain will pierce your heart there will be sorrow in the heart the time had now come and now we have the wonder of solace for the sorrowful in john chapter 9 verse 25 it tells us there 
now this church by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister Mary the wife of Cleopas and Mary Magdalene verse 26 it says when Jesus therefore saw his mother and his disciples standing by whom he loved he says unto his mother woman behold thy son yes i'm your son or the son of god i came for a purpose i came for a mission i came with a vision and my will is to do the will of him that sent me this is what he sent me for that i will bear the iniquity of the whole world and i'm going i'll not be there to provide shelter for you to provide security for you to provide companionship for you to provide all the substance everything you will need to have a healthy happy life but look at that john the beloved behold your son and then after that look at verse 27 and in verse 27 then saith he to the disciple behold thy mother you know there are people when they still alive they are still alive they have job they have money they have public recognition they have anything they want but they forget their mother they forget their father if anything at all they might just call once in a while once in a year once in a blue moon mommy how are you well how is she without food how is she without money how is she without care how is she without decent accommodation many people do not understand that even when you are much older you are still to take care of your father and your mother i'm a christian now i'm born again now so i don't have to think of a father of a mother but jesus dying on the cross and doing an eternally significant work for the lord spiritual is still remembered the natural are you like that do you remember your parents do you remember your siblings do you remember other people who are suffering the wonder of solace for the sorrowful is said and then he says from that hour not just from that day from that hour not just from that week you know some people they have responsibility to take care of her take care of him and then they said uh, mother you are my mother now i'll get back to you and they're so busy they don't get back in a long time but from that hour that disciple took her on onto his own home unto his own home that the solace that the sympathy that the supply of what christ would have supplied his mother if christ were there solace for the sorrowful as the lord jesus said took care of his mother the lord will take care of you you are now bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh and all your needs the lord will take care in jesus name so when you are sorrowful remember his solace when you are crushed with all the problems of this life remember his comfort and when there's need in your life and you are poor beyond your ability to provide for yourself remember he cares for you he will always continually he'll keep on caring for you in jesus name we'll come to number five number five is the wonder of a spiritual eternal satisfaction the wonder of a spiritual eternal satisfaction let's come to john chapter 19 
And I'm coming to verse 28. After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. I thirst. Why? Again, this is where Christ has come to stand in our place today, tomorrow, till the end of life, until eternity. You know, in eternity, those who don't have Christ here on earth now, they will thirst forever and ever. And there will be no drop of water. There's no water in hellfire. That rich man said, Father Abraham, Saint Lazarus, that he'll put his finger in water and bring me a drop of water. For I am tormented and a thirst in this place. And Abraham said, Son, remember that in life you urge all things that will comfort you and it appeared you were satisfied with everything not only drop of water not only a glass of water as much water as you wanted but now Lazarus is comforted and you are tormented and then there's a gulf between you and us that no one not even Abraham no one, not Lazarus, can pass from hence to yonder. And none can pass from that place because he's thirsty and he wants the water of life. No one can come out of that place and come to us there. And then he said, why don't you send Lazarus then back to the world and go and see my five brethren who have not believed. I don't want my relatives, even my enemies to come here and have this thirst that I have. And, and Abraham said, they have the word of God, written by Moses and the prophets. Let them hear him. If they will not hear him, if they will not hear the preacher, the prophet, and the, and the proclaimer of the word of God, neither will they believe, even if Lazarus went from the grave unto them. And so that rich man kept on a thirst, a thirst, a thirst, and there was no satisfaction. But today, as you come, all your thirst will be satisfied. Thirst in your soul, thirst in your spirit, thirst in your mind. All your thirst will be satisfied in Jesus' name. You know, today as we come and you thirst for the water of life, Christ bore the thirst for you already. And in Revelation chapter 22, reading from verse 17, Revelation chapter 2, 22, verse 17, and the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. Look at this. And let him that is a thirst come. You're thirsty for the water of life. You are thirsty for his mercy. We are thirsty for the peace of mind. Come, Jesus already bought that thirst for you. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Now it's available for you. It's available for me. It's available for everyone in Jesus' name. Whosoever. Is thirsty for the water of life, for the salvation of the Lord, for the satisfaction of the Lord. Let him come and take the water of life freely. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst 
after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are those people that recognize that the thirst, every form of thirst, you'll ever have Christ has born it for you already. And he said, you're thirsty for purity of heart, thirsty for righteousness, thirsty for holiness, all those things you cannot have after death. It's only in this life you can be thirsty for the water of life, salvation. You can be thirsty for the righteousness of God, sanctification. And then you'll be filled in Jesus' name. He will satisfy you. With salvation, he'll satisfy you. With sanctification, righteousness, holiness of heart, holiness of life, it will satisfy you. And then John chapter 7, verse 37. In John chapter 7, verse 37, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, you see that, he bought the thirst for us on the cross. And he says, now, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Verse 38, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Verse 39, but this speak he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him shall receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Salvation is available today. Sanctification is available today. And the baptism immersion in the Holy Ghost is available today. Whosoever is thirsty of the water of life, you can come. Whosoever is thirsty of righteousness, purity, holiness, you can come. Whosoever is thirsty of the Spirit in the baptismal measure, today you can come. It will satisfy you here spiritually and it will satisfy you up there in heaven forever in Jesus' name. Number six now is the wonder. Number six, the wonder of his satisfactory sacrifice for all seeking souls. The wonder of his sacrifice that pleases God. The sacrifice that pleases heaven. The sacrifice that pleases the heavenly father. The wonder of his satisfactory sacrifice for all seeking souls. Look at John chapter 19, verse 30. John chapter 19, verse 30. John chapter 19. We're looking at verse 30. As you look at that, look at what it says. When Jesus therefore had received the finger, he said, It is finished. Somebody shout, it is finished. Somebody shout, it is finished. Look at this. When he had received the vinegar, he refused to drink the vinegar. And now he said to the announcement of the whole universe, announcement to heaven, announcement to earth, announcement to everyone, to you, to me, and to everyone. He now said, it is finished. Say that. What does that mean? That means your redemption is accomplished. That means your salvation is provided. That means your curse is cancelled. That means every evil sin that should have come upon you, every sin is finished. Redemption. Salvation. 
adoption into the family of God, satisfaction in every way, everything is now available for you. Look at Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, we're looking at verse 14. Colossians chapter 2, reading from verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And then in verse 15, it says, and having spoiled principalities and powers all the principalities are finished in your life all the powers of darkness they are crushed they are conquered they are finished in your life in jesus name he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it he has triumphed and because they are triumphed all those powers of the enemy they are conquered cancelled finalized and finished out of your life in jesus name Amen. hebrews chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 14. Chapter 2, reading from verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death, his death, his death at Calvary, his death on the cross, that through death he might that he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. His power, the devil's power, is destroyed out of your life. It's destroyed out of my life. I am free. What are you? I am free. It is finished. Sickness finished deformity finished blindness finished sin finished attacks affliction finished out of your life in jesus name please remember when you reject that unwanted tenant out of your house i'm talking out of your body all is load they say pack and go and the soldiers they're all around and if he doesn't take your word he looks at those soldiers and they're saying hurry up pack up they pack everything and they go and when they go that means all your problems with that tenant everything is gone but by end when the soldiers are not around and you're all alone, then you have locked your door and you hear knocking and you say, who is that? And he says, I'm your old tenant. Say, I don't have anything to do with you. I don't have anything to do with sickness. I don't have anything to do with weakness. I don't have anything to do with those principalities and powers. They are gone and gone forever. I will never open my door to them again in Jesus' name. You are free. I am free. We are free. The body of Christ is free from that old devil and will never open the door for them anytime in our lives in Jesus' name. 
Look at verse 15 there. In verse 15, and delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage. Thank God today you are totally free and you will not come back into bondage anymore in Jesus' name. Now, number seven number seven is the wonder of supreme submission for sublime sovereignty look at luke chapter 23 and verse 46 and when jesus that cried with a loud voice he said father into thy hands i commend my spirit into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said that, he gave up the ghost. He went to heaven triumphantly, submissive unto the heavenly Father. And because of that submission, the supreme submission, he now comes to sublime sovereignty. In Philippians chapter 2, Reading from verse 8. Philippians chapter 2. Reading from verse 8. And being found in fashion. As a man. He humbled himself. And became obedient unto death. That's Christ. Even the death of the cross. Now in verse 9. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and giving him a name which is above every name christ because of his submission he now has a name above every name any name of any sin christ is above any name of any sickness christ is above any name of any attack affliction christ is above any name of any disease or deformity christ is above and when you call on that name every other sin bearing any name from the sea from the forest on land in the sky anywhere all those things will have to bow anything in your life of the devil anything in your life of suffering anything in your life of perdition when we mention the name of jesus that thing has to bow your sadness has to bow your sickness has to bow that evil has to bow and the destiny that is evil that thing has to bow and the voice of the agent of satan in your life that thing has to bow somebody shout bow they will bow out of your life wherefore god also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name in verse 10 that at the name of Jesus every knee every knee every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth then in verse 11 and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. The moment you confess and say, Christ, I come, I confess you as my substitute. I confess you as my Savior. I confess you as a final sacrifice. I confess you as my sanctifier. I confess you as a shepherd and bishop of my soul. I confess you as my sufficiency. I confess you as the sovereign Lord. And I know everything will bow away from my life. It will be done today for you in Jesus' name. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Heaven is ready for you. All the sins of the past, 
if you're still feeling the guilt let him take everything away from you because now he is lord is lord in heaven is lord on earth is lord over your life and when you own him accept him believe him as lord every other thing will be put right in your life in jesus name what is the person there that accepts christ as lord christ as lord lord of angels lord of heaven lord of earth lord on everything under the earth in the sea in the ocean in the forest on land and in the sky and now is your lord praise the lord stand up on your feet and then tell the lord oh lord i know you are my substitute lord i know you are my lord lord i know even the devil cannot have any part any authority in my life anymore because you are my lord take him as your lord believe him as your lord own him as your lord surrender to him as your lord submit to him as your lord and from now till eternity you're free from all the principalities and powers i didn't hear you pray i see you standing i see that you're just there you're not saying anything to the lord why don't you say lord jesus I know I'm forgiven because you said, Father, forgive them. I accept that. I accept that. Forgive me, Lord. You're my substitute. You died for me that you might bring me to God. Lord, I accept that. I am now having your righteousness because I transfer all my sins unto you. Lord, you have salvation for the worst of sinners. You told that man, today you'll be with me in paradise. And I accept that new life. I accept that ticket for heaven. I accept that salvation. And I accept that my name today is in the book of life. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Lord, thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. You have salvation for the worst of sinners and you have salvation, eternal life for me. Lord, you are the solace and the comforter of my life. My sorrow, take away. That deep, deep despair in my heart, take away. That discomfort in my system, take away. The tears that fall because of that sorrow, of the loss in my life. Lord, be my friend. Be my Lord. Be my companion. Be the father to the fatherless. Be the weed would be the husband of the widow. Be the supporter, the circle of the widower. Here am I, Lord. Take the sorrow away. Solace for the sorrowful. Lord, I thirst. Lord, I thirst. I thirst for the water of life. Satisfy me, Lord. I thirst for righteousness, inner righteousness, beautiful righteousness of God. Lord, I thirst with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, all my passion, all my desires. Lord, I thirst for that righteousness, that holiness of heart, without which no man shall see the Lord. I thirst, and then it will satisfy you. I remember his substitutionary sacrifice. 
is satisfactory to heaven. And when he said, it is finished, he accomplished that for you. You can tell the Lord, Lord, I accept. It's finished. Judgment finished. Punishment forever and ever taken out of the way. Attacks, afflictions, or principalities and powers finished, taken out of the way. The power of sin broken and the yoke of the enemy destroyed, finished. Lord, I accept. There's no other sacrifice still to be made before you can be free. It's done everything that is made for your freedom, liberation, and redemption finished. And now he submitted himself unto the Lord, Father, into your hands. I commend my spirit, Father, into your hands. I commend my spirit. He didn't have the name of Satan in his mouth. Father, God, that the name in his mouth. Forget about the devil, eat your hands. I commend my spirit. And he went to heaven. It's there for you now. Preparing a place for you. And when you to surrender, you submit into the hands of the Lord. Eternal satisfaction, eternal joy will become your portion. And anything and everything that torments, that troubles, that attacks, that afflicts here on this side of heaven. The Lord already has taken everything away. And when you say, I identify with the Lord and I surrender and I submit myself to him sovereign authority and power will manifest in your life in Jesus name we pray if you believe everything you have heard is for you today, I said, in Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Father, we well, thank you for this hour. Thank you for reminding us of Christ as Savior. Reminding us Christ, our substitute. Reminding us Christ, the final acceptable sacrifice reminding us of Christ our comforter Christ who has brought solace for the sorrowful Christ the one that has satisfied the demand of the judge of all the earth and for us he has finished everything Lord we give you the glory Lord we accept you one and all that all the problems spiritual, all problems natural, all problems physical, all problems earthly, all problems eternal, you have taken away from every one of us in Jesus' name. Guilt, go away. Condemnation, go away. 
eternal punishment is removed already. We accept that in Jesus' name. Amen. Salvation for those who repent. Amen. Sanctification for those who consecrate themselves. And Holy Ghost baptism for sanctified, purified souls to serve you in power, in authority, divine authority, and new anointing in Jesus' name. Amen. Provision for all the needs of every life. I will pray, Lord, that we'll walk on the head of every enemy and we'll march on to victory and triumph every day of our lives in Jesus' name. And when it comes the time to cross over, that very moment, that very hour, that very day, we will be with you in heaven in Jesus' name. That thief on the cross did not rely on any other thing. Lord, look at this. I want to do this. There's no time for that. But the Lord swept everything away and he said, today you'll be with me in paradise. I pray, Lord, everyone here today, everyone over there connected together with us in this worship service, I pray the assurance of paradise, of heaven, of glory, the, the assurance of going with you when the dead shall rise and then those who are alive shall be caught away to glory. The assurance of being with you will be with everyone. We go out now before we come back in the evening in the joy of the Lord, in the strength of the Lord, in the power of the Lord, in the assurance of the Lord, in the salvation, satisfaction of the Lord in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, your face, everyone around, shield everyone, that that evil one that has been cast out will not come to take any place in their lives anymore. Lord, you are now our Lord. Reign in our heart. Reign in our soul. Reign in our lives. And reign without any rival. Sit on the throne of our heart and control our lives, even from now on, from victory unto victory. From conquering unto conquering. From triumph unto triumph in Jesus' name. Affirm, confirm, establish the victory, the triumph in every life. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Now I am more than a conqueror. Now I am more than a conqueror. Be it permanent in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen.